Hello, you wonderful people. So for today's video, I'm gonna talk about Trails into Reverie. Obviously, this won't be a spoiler uh, discussion. It's gonna be just a non-spoiler discussion, kind of give you my general thoughts about the game because I beat it about like two days ago at the time of me recording, and I just kind of want to share my general thoughts. So like I said, once again, no spoilers, so you don't have to worry about it, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. I love it. As you, I talk about all the time, I'm completely obsessed with this franchise. It felt so good to be back in this world, which technically I never left the world because, as you know, I played the Cold Steel games over and over and over again. And obviously this game is going to resonate really a lot with me because obviously it pulls from the Erebonia arc. That, that in itself is going to be interesting, but like, let me finish what I'm saying. It, it, it combines the Erebonia arc with the uh, Crossbell arc, but much like 4, and even three as well, like it heavily pulls in everything up until this point in time. This one in particular really leans into it. But the thing I was about to say is the game ended up being a lot more cross spell than I was expecting. But in the grand scheme of things, it makes sense because at least the Erebonia arc had four games to finish its whole story. Even the Liberal arc had three games. Cross spell didn't. Cross spell had two games. I guess arguably you could make the argument like maybe two and two thirds because obviously parts of the crossbell arc play into three and obviously it culminates and plays into four which kind of gives its own resolution to both the crossbell arc and the empire arc but this final chapter kind of uh, implements that even more because i originally didn't even know there was a game in between four and the beginning of the uh calvert arc which is called the um i think the translated title is trails through break Trails Through Daybreak is the uh, translated title, I believe. Um, but either way, I didn't know there was initially a game in here until like well after the fact. Because I knew like the 3 and 9 book would play into the next game. I thought that was in reference to the Calvert arc. I didn't know, like I said, I didn't know this game existed. But this is the game where the 3 and 9 books come into place. And that, that's kind of a spoiler, but not really. Um, and, you know, I, I didn't say whatever capacity they play into the story, but... I just I just thought that was that, that was interesting. I, I do like that they made that a continuous theme throughout those games, making it so that the books become relevant. And it's like, no, you're rewarded for reading the books because you get a little background on these characters that might pop up, whether it's a Carnelia or a Red Moon Rose situation or like a three and nine situation. So, but anyway, like I said, I'm, I'm sorry I got really sidetracked there. I, I want to go back to the point I was making before, where it's just like I was surprised at how much of a crossbell game this is because it. Crossbell is the centerfold of this story. Once again, it's not really a spoiler, but like, yeah, the crux of the story revolves around, yes, the Empire's evolved and stuff like that, but it's mainly a Crossbell game, which also feels very befitting that they would share this with the Empire game, just because both of those games in this arc so far are the only ones that have kind of happened directly parallel. While the Crossbell stuff is happening, the Empire stuff is happening, and it all kind of amalgamates and comes together in three and four but more like eat the most in uh code still four but it feels very prominent like i said because the crossbow games only technically got two solo games for this to be mainly a crossbow game and in, in a lot of capacity like i said it doesn't take away from the empire and the erebonia crew being involved but because to me, I'd say, I wouldn't even say it's 50-50. Maybe, like I said, if you really have to really break it down, I feel like it's probably more 60-40. Crossbell, 60%. The Empire, about uh, 40%. But I'd even go as far as pushing the percentage even higher to be like Crossbell, 70% of the game, and then M the Empire, Erebonia being like 30%. And obviously, like, once again, I've loved every game in this art and these characters. Obviously, I'm more... Uh, bias towards the Empire crew because uh, the cross uh, the the Code Steel games are the only games I've played myself. I've watched someone play the Sky games or the Crop uh, and as well as the Crossbell games, so I have a more direct connection, and I'm a lot more attached to the Erebonia squad. But that doesn't take away my love and admiration for like the story of the Liberal squad or the. Uh, crossbow squads but I, I love the direction they ended up deciding to take this story and it just I, like like you know once again no no spoilers but just it hits you like any other like these games are so good at when they when they they hit emotionally they really hit emotion especially the endings the endings always get you swelled up because you're like it's sad it's over obviously i know there's way more story to tell once again i, I remember quoting this before because i remember reading an article or something referencing that falcom said that the game, the story is about 60% done. And I don't know where that line is drawn when they said that. I think only the first, because the second 
Calvert game hasn't come out yet. Only the first one has. So I think I think at that point they might have been talking about 60, but I know like two was in development at the time, so it could have been like what two included it's sixty percent. I don't know. You know, with certain reveals, especially on the Ouroboros side of things, we know like there's a time limit on where this story is gonna go, so that clock is ticking down more and more with each passage of bit of time you know we're on a very tight time schedule in a lot of ways so that's definitely going to be interesting incorporating that knowledge of how much of the story we're supposedly through versus like how much time is left on the clock you know if you know if you, if you know what i'm talking about but um yeah I, I really liked how they they uh, like i said uh went about this story especially giving you the three different story routes you know you have your lloyd route you have your reen route and you have your third route i won't even say one of the names for the I mean one is obviously a major spoiler but the other one is too and I I think it was already known but I don't even think when the trailers came out I was such an idiot I don't even think I pieced it together about like the 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 code name that the third character uses I was like why didn't I correlate that because it hit me when I was playing the game I was like oh yeah it makes sense I think I knew that but it's been so long since I saw the initial trailers for um trails in the reverie so i ended up forgetting a lot of stuff getting back to my point i really love the structuring of the story of giving you these three different routes to take um it kind of reminds if you've ever played the best example i could think of it reminds me of kingdom hearts birth by sleep even if you've never played kingdom hearts basically all these characters stories overlap you're just getting different perspectives of like their journey and their experiences and, and a lot of times there's overlap it, it, it works exactly the same way in this uh series as well which i think is so interesting across and it's so interesting how in some story beats you really flip back and forth of like oh you have to go here you have to go here like a, a great example to use would be like so it's been implemented specifically in three and four of code steel how there have been moments where you're going to have to bounce back and forth between two different squads it kind of works similarly to that because that usually happens story beat wise um throughout those games it only happens like a handful of times but you know but this is happening the entire game and like i said some are a little more like oh you you get to this point you have to switch over like there's no like okay i'm gonna finish this entire story then i do this it's like no they're divided up in the act so while you're like part way through Lloyd's story, once you reach a certain point, you have to switch over to Reigns. And then after a certain point, you have to switch over to the third storyline. You have to kind of complete all of them. It's not like, oh, you go the entire game one route, then do it. It's like, no, they, I, and I think that works well. I mean, because using the birth by sleep comparison, it's like you could switch back and forth between those mid playthroughs. I've done that before because I just thought it'd be interesting to kind of because those storylines, you can kind of follow where they're taking place, you know, doing that. So it's, it's kind of fun to do that. Getting back to the example I was also about to think about specifically, I was thinking structure wise, because when I originally played through the Code Steel games, I didn't have any experience with the Liberal or Crossbell games. But after beating four Code Steel 4 for the first time, I went back and caught up with the story so when ha having once i got to uh sky the third and i was like "Ooh, looking at the way haji um haji mari or trails and the reveries design i'm like i'm getting a feeling like there's going to be some overlap and when playing the game i was like oh yeah there's a lot of stuff they took from sky to third and implemented in this game interestingly enough but it's like they took that and they took certain elements of like one and three of the code steel games specifically because one and three are the most linear of the games because obviously two and four of the code steel games are a little more open world and i even make the argument i think trails and delivery is even more um linear than the other than code steel one and three but maybe that's just my perspective on it um it doesn't really open up until the end but even then it's not like as full open worldish as like two and four become but yeah, I just thought that was so interesting how they implemented. Like I said, you could just you could see the elements, the story structuring, as well as some of the gameplay elements they've pulled from different games and stuff like that. Like one video game, like one video battle mechanic, I thought was interesting. I won't go into it too much, but they basically brought back a mechanic we haven't seen for a little while, and then they brought it back and kind of tweaked it in, in a new, different, and really interesting way of how you implement it how it, you could utilize it in combat so really really interesting and obviously also went into this knowing like oh man there's a lot of characters in this game and there really is it's kind of like very overwhelming especially when you're trying to keep everyone around the same level which is nearly impossible i mean the game does a lot to help you do that but it's still like for reasons i won't get into there are reasons you need to like 
keep your characters like all leveled up even those you wouldn't really use i'm also anal i'm the type of person that like i kind of want to use everyone but it's a lot to kind of ask for I mean, it's easier with the code steel games because you have nine to eleven characters so it makes it a little easier to kind of handle that i mean obviously specifically referencing one and two obviously that expands a little bit more three but spends even more in uh four but yeah i should also note i i talked about it i did beat the game but i am still doing some of the post game stuff currently i am in the coda section you know without going into too much but i'm in i'm like part way into the coda section i have seen the what is considered kind of like the secret ending that very specific daydream if you know what i'm talking about you know what i'm talking about i don't want to even like really get into it but what it, i think that's kind of considered a secret ending and obviously that's set up for the calvert arc uh even more so because i thought it was interesting because i was like what goes down and now i was like thought there was more to your situation said this sets up for the uh calvert arc and obviously the parallels that it has with uh, the Erebone arc in a lot of ways is, is going to is a really interesting parallel but you know once again I'm not trying to get too nitty-gritty into that but obviously like I'm just currently wrapping up a lot of the post game stuff uh, doing I got, I've got most of the trophies I think I just hit 80% of the trophies now but like I said still got to finish up the coda section and stuff like that I'm still going to need a second playthrough because I never play the games on nightmare mode first time through I'm just I'm not I anal like that I don't mind playing through the games multiple times, as you know how many times I've been through the Code Steel games. It's not even a spoiler. Well, it was a spoiler for me, but I'm not going to talk about it here. It's something that most people might be aware of. There's an element to this game's story that I wish I didn't know going in. It didn't ruin the experience in any shape or form, but I had this thing in the back of my head the entire time being like, oh, I was kind of told that this was going to be important because of a guide I was reading, plus someone commented on it. Once again, I'm not blaming anyone. It, just, it is what it is. But I had this thing in the back of my head the entire time. I'm like, oh, I know this story beat thing. And then most of the game doesn't revolve around it. And then it kind of does, but you don't really get to it till near the end of the game where it's like, hey, here's this spoiler thing. I knew it doesn't really come into play until like fully realized and revealed until the end of the game granted there was a lot of elements and details of it i i wasn't aware there was a specific aspect of the spoiler i was aware of i just didn't have the context of how it would be implemented so that was something i was still discovering as we went through the as i went through the game but still i kind of wish i didn't know it going in there's certain aspects in that regard but i don't get me wrong there are plenty of surprises and developments in this game uh some characters that pop up some like i said some really some really interesting stuff they, they did a lot of really really interesting things with this game i don't know how in general most people feel about it i love trails in the reverie but once again i'm like completely obsessed with this franchise i know like some of the erebonia choices storyline wise i know did not resonate with certain people people have their issues which you're entitled to feel those ways but i i love it i love it so much and i'm just sad to be technically done but like i said there's still more even story be wise even in the coda section there's still more to kind of dive into but even though like the main main story is done but i'm sure the coda stuff still has even more to give in a lot of capacities very much in the same vein as two's at the log that's all i'll kind of say and make that comparison but yeah I've been running my mouth the entire time. I do apologize. I didn't mean for the video to run this long, but it's just like, you know, once you get to me stop talking about anything trail slash Kaseki related, I can't and won't shut up. So, but I just wanted to make this video kind of talking about that and let you know where my headspace is currently. And it just, it just obviously gets me that much more excited to get the, uh, and jump into the next trails games. I mean, obviously it took me a while to, uh, like I said, it, it just came out like here in the U.S. a couple months ago, so I'm a couple months behind, but still, it's probably going to be a while. Probably won't get the. I don't know where the translation process currently is, but considering, I, did, I would assume we'd probably get it sometime this year, maybe late this year. Once again, I haven't looked into too much on the Calvert art of like where the translation process is going with that, but I'd assume we'd get the first one at least sometime this year. There's at least like a two or three year period in between. Um, a game's release and uh it, it's released in japan versus like getting it translated especially with how much text and stuff needs to be translated in these games because they are dense as hell especially on the dialogue front so but it, it you know you know because there was at least almost three years in between um hajimaru no kaseki slash you know trails in the reverie so it'll probably be around the same length probably maybe a little less time but we'll have to wait and see but i'm excited and uh, like i said to continue finishing up 
uh, what I got to do in the trails and the reverie, as well as um, just seeing what the future of the franchise holds. Yeah, like I said, I've, I've run my mouth off enough. That's 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 really all I wanted to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.